Well, hey everyone. Um, it's been a while since I've done another math video. Um, I don't know. I wonder if it's this pandemic or what. But um, boy, it's been a hard one, hasn't it? Okay, I won't go on about that because you came here to uh, learn about how do you find the equation of the altitude of a triangle given three vertices. And a vertice, again, are just these three points that we're given. We're given three points in this question here. We're going to write them down in a second on this thing called a Cartesian plane, or this grid down below. And then we're going to find the equation of the altitude from u. So let's start by just plotting these three points before we start talking about what an altitude is. Okay? So let's start with the first one, negative 6, negative 3. Well, start from the origin or the middle, count 6 over to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 3, 1, 2, 3, and there's our first point. That is point S. Okay, and I'm going to label it. It is negative 6, negative 3. Sorry for the messy writing. <laughs> that is supposed to be a comma here. Yikes. The next point is 5, 4, so count 5 across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, and here we go. And let's label it. So t is 5, comma, ooh, that looks more like a comma, 5, 4. And the next, or the last one, because it's a triangle, there's only three of these things called vertices. 7, negative 4. So we're going to count 7 over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4. It sounds like I'm in an exercise class. I apologize. This is math exercises. Okay, this is point U, 7, comma, negative 4 in brackets. Here's our three points. Okay, I might as well uh, connect those points. I'll just use um, I'll just use this smart board software here because I can't draw straight lines very well. Let me go from there to there. And then we go. Now if you're at home you could use a ruler to do this if you like. Or you can also plot these into Desmos. I won't do that on this video but you can plot, you know, bracket 5 comma 4 bracket in Desmos, the online graphing calculator. It's free and it will plot that point for you. It's pretty cool. Um, connecting the points is trickier, but it will plot these points really nicely. Okay, let's get back to the question. Now it's saying, what is the equation of the altitude from u in this case? So we're talking about this point right here and an altitude. Okay, here's what an altitude is. It's a line that goes from the base. So in this case, I know the base is normally what we would say is the bottom of a triangle. But if we're going through U, it's a line coming from this point U, and it's coming down here and slicing through this line here, this line ST. And it's slicing through at a special angle. It's slicing through at 90 degrees, okay? So it's slicing through, hmm, I don't know, it's kind of hard to, maybe I'll use, I'll use a straight line. It's slicing through at, a 90 degree angle, okay? Something like that. It's going to look something like this. Now we're supposed to come up with, <laughs> sorry about that, we're supposed to come up with the equation of this sort of pinkish line here. Now remember the equation of a straight line. There's a lot of stuff you have to know when you do a, a question like this. The equation of a straight line is in this form y equals mx plus b. So this part here, the m, would be our slope. So we have to find the slope of this pink line. And the b part here, that is called the y-intercept. That is the spot where this line would slice through the y-axis. This is the y-axis right here. So we need this line to slice through this y-axis, and the point where it slices through is our y-intercept, and that's the number we'd write right there. And our whole goal, goal in this question is to find an equation where we find what the slope is and the y-intercept is of this line. 
So let's look at this. First of all, we can guess where this line is going to slice through. It looks like it might, might slice through around 6 or 7 or 8, and that would be our y-intercept. And the slope, well, we can guess. It looks like it's pretty steep. Um, the slope is always the rise over the run, so I don't know, pick a spot, let's say right here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, looks like it's like 3 over 2, and it's a negative slope because it's going downhill. The only thing is, people, we're supposed to come up not with guesses, we're supposed to come up with the actual slope of this line and the actual y-intercept. So we can guess, and that's cool to guess, because it helps us to decide if our answer is good or not. But how do we come up with the actual slope of this line when we don't know what the y-intercept is? We only know this point here, 7, negative 4. Well, instead of keeping you waiting, because some of you may be waiting, <laughs> some of you may be on a shortened time, look at this line right here. This line right here is supposed to be 90 degrees to this line, because this is an altitude. By definition, it is 90 degrees. There's another word for that. It's called, when, when two lines cut at 90 degrees, do you know that word? It is called perpendicular. So if we have a perpendicular line, that means that if we could find the slope of this line ST right here and use the perpendicular um, rule that I will talk about in a second, we could then know the slope of this line. Maybe some of you out there are just stopping the video right now because you now kind of know what to do. But let me keep going, okay? I will keep going. So we want to find the slope of ST. Now remember to find the slope of a line and all you're given are two points and we're not going to actually find the slope by um, counting squares here. We're going to use these two points here just to make sure we've got it exact. Remember, you take the y values and you minus them. Okay, that's the rise, y2 minus y1, over top of x2 minus x1. So let's do that right here because that may sound confusing. You take the y value, let's call this x1 and y, sorry, x2 and y2, and this over here, let's call this x1 and y1. So let's go 4 minus negative 3, 4 minus negative 3, and then on the bottom we're going to go 5 minus negative 6. So 5 minus negative 6, and then what we're going to do is figure this out. So 4 minus negative 3. Remember two negatives like that? It makes a positive, okay? So 4 minus negative 3 is just like saying 4 plus 3. So that'd be 7. And the same thing on the bottom. 5 minus negative 6 is actually 11. So the slope of this line is 7 over 11. And I'm not talking about the the fast food or corner store that some of you know about in North America. I think they're actually in other countries too, 7-Eleven. <laughs> okay, anyway, they should be promoting me here. But anyway, 7 over 11. Now, here's the rule that I was talking about earlier. If you want to know the perpendicular slope to this, all you do is flip this slope. You flip it, or you take what's called the reciprocal of this, and then you change the sign to the opposite of what it is now. Some people call it the opposite reciprocal, some people call it the negative reciprocal, but you flip it, so you flip the 7 and the 11, that would become 11 over 7, and then you change the sign. So the slope of the line we are looking for is negative 11 over 7, which is kind of cool because now we know the M part right up here. Okay, we know that part is going to be negative 11 over 7. That's great. The last thing we have to figure out is this y-intercept. And how do we do that? Well, what you do is you take this point, 7, negative 4. Remember, this is the x value and this is the y value. And it's a point along this line right here that we're looking for. So you can take the 7 and the negative 4 and plug them in where the y and the x are up here in this equation. So I don't know if I have room to do this, and I'll do it in a different color. So the y value I see there is negative 4. 
the slope we've already found is negative 11 over 7 and the x value right here is 7 so we're multiplying this fraction by 7 and then all of that plus b b is going to be our y-intercept so now that we've subbed in the x and the y value and we've subbed in the slope let's find out what b is and then we're done this question okay and there's no more questions after this I'm just doing one here just to give you an idea how to do this in case you have a question like this on your own math so when you multiply a fraction times a regular number like this or a whole number remember we can take the top and the bottom and just go 7 divided by 7 which will cancel it'll just be 1 so we really have this this question kind of works out nicely that it did that. We don't have to deal with a fraction anymore. All we have to do now is bring this negative 11 to over to the other side, so we add 11 to both sides, so we end up with b all by itself here, and if we add 11 to both sides, we end up with b equals, well, negative 4 plus 11, because we brought it over, it's plus 11, negative 4 plus 11 is 7. We now know that the y-intercept is going to be 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if this line were to continue, whoops, that is some kind of terrible line I'm drawing here. Anyway, it would go right through there and that would make a 90 degree angle right here. And we now know the equation of this line. Okay, um, where can I write it? Hmm. I'll write it right here. So y equals negative 11 over 7 x plus, and we found that the y-intercept was 7. So our final answer, what we were looking for, is this equation right here. Now, there were a bunch of stuff we had to do in this video, including knowing about negative reciprocals or opposite reciprocals. We had to know about this equation, y equals mx plus b, and that this part's the slope and this is the y-intercept. We had to know the slope formula here, and I just want you to know that uh, there are other videos that teach you the steps that we used here so that we could solve this thing right here, okay? There are other videos that I've made, and please check those out on my website okay because I don't want to sit there and confuse you worse that is a horrible feeling for a math teacher I have made my students more confused than before that is a terrible feeling alright people I hope you have a good day despite the pandemic and all the other things that are going on in this world of ours okay take care everyone